We're live. I'm Hank Strange. Welcome back to the Big Daddy Gun Studio, live from Gainesville, Florida. Tonight, this is episode, what is We're it? Live. Episode 21. I'm 21. Welcome oh, back shit. in here. Big Someone's Daddy got Gun feedback. Studio. Oh, sorry, live sorry, sorry. That would Florida. be Walter Keller. This is yeah. what happens when you Tonight, go live. This is episode, what is it? <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. <laughs> That's okay. Walter wanted to make sure that we knew he was here. But before we, before we go to Walter, I want to talk about our special guest. I, uh, like I said, I think it's episode 21. I don't know at this point. Yeah, it is episode 21. Okay, our special guest is Tony Simon of The Second Is For Everyone. Right, Tony? Yes, The Second Is For Everyone. Yeah, you're also a podcaster, so I know we look very unprofessional here. You're probably way more professional than this <laughs> on your podcast. Walter wanted to make sure that we knew he was here, but before... Uh, look, see, now, more feedback. <laughs> was that me just now? Because I sounded real deep and sexy chocolate. <laughs> I don't know what was going, yeah, yeah, I don't know what was going on there. So what's the tell us all the podcast Whoa. that you're on, Tony? I'm on the Gun and Gear Review podcast on the Firearms Radio Network every Tuesday and it gets posted up I think Thursdays okay. uh, on uh, their website that you can download and I'm also on the um, Self Defense Radio Network with um, self-defense gun stories. So we talk about three incidences of civilian self-defense using a firearm. It's me, it's self-defense instructors and the host Rob Morris every week for about 15 minutes. We talk about three incidents, what they did right, what they did wrong, and just critique it a little bit. Not much Monday morning quarterbacking, but a little bit to what the regular citizen can do to defend themselves. Okay, yeah, what's up Lola? Why is he on here twice? Uh, um, I'm gone. Uh, yeah, Lola, Lola is seeing you twice, so we got some te technical difficulties. If you have to, just uh, you know, jump off, sign back in, or whatever you have okay, to do. Um, yeah, maybe that's you, woman. Maybe that's you. <laughs> looks, everything looks good on my end. Okay. So, all right, so that's cool. So now, Tony, for everyone out there that's watching, he's in New Jersey, and we're going to talk about the state of the Second Amendment in New Jersey, if there is such a thing. <laughs> as a Second Amendment in New Jersey. I'm being facetious. There should be. It should be all over America. Everybody should have the Second Amendment. But we'll talk about that with Tony, as well as um, Tony is, is, a, is somewhat of an aficionado of the high point. <laughs> so, Take the hate off right away. Yeah, yeah we're going to have that discussion. <laughs> and uh, as I said earlier, joining us is Mr. Walter Keller. Walter, what's up, man? Just eating some pizza, sorry. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. You know, this is, listen, we do this rough and rugged style here, man. Rough and rugged. Man. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, jamming. Go, we that's, jamming, my man. that's my Jamaican accent right there. I can, I can <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think I qualify for Jamaican, but. Uh, I can go deep with the, with the Jamaican accent. Ja Rastafari, Ailee Selassie, Ailee Cognito, Ailee. Ailee. Yeah, okay, that's it. Ailee, that's mate. all you get. That's all you get. <laughs> that's all you get for free out of me. <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna, you know, we're rough and rugged here, Walter. So it's cool. You can eat. We don't, we don't want you hungry. So, oh, that you were just about to eat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So to, um, let's uh, let's uh, let's start with Tony while we're waiting for questions to come in. Let us know if you guys have questions. If there's anyone out there that's from New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, those those uh, Second Amendment challenged areas. Or even if you're just from the states around there that you can actually have, you know, access to guns and gun rights, let us know. Hit us up with questions and stuff like that, and we will pose it to Tony. Tony, I think the first thing that people want to know out there is, like, you know, tell us who you are and what's your background. All right. My name is Tony Simon. I'm um, a Second Amendment advocate, I guess you'll call it. My background, I come from Virginia, southern Virginia, middle of the country. That's my whole thing. I'm a country dude, um, joined the Marine Corps at 17. Prior to that, was on a rifle team in high school, did our thing, joined the Corps at 17, got out at 23, uh, moved up to New Jersey. I only had a couple of firearms, I think uh, a 1911 at the time, and this was in 93. So I purchased a 45 caliber 1911 and a um, finished Mosin Nagant. This was back wow. in the day. 
so, uh, it was 90 bucks and i walked out the store with the rifle over my shoulder i mean that just tells you how different virginia is from new jersey right so that was that was 93 i moved to new jersey but before i came i made a phone call to every state police between virginia and new jersey just because I didn't want to break the laws, I was transporting a firearm. And that should have been my first warning when I called the New Jersey State Police and they told me how, how to transfer or carry a firearm into their state. So Virginia was, you can carry a 1911 on your seat, loaded, locked and cocked, and we don't care as long as you tell it to the officer. I got to New Jersey, it's like your firearm has to be locked in the trunk, your ammo has to be locked in a glove box, and uh, you it, it it also has to be in a locked box, your pistol. So when the lady told me that, I started laughing <laughs> because I thought she was telling me a joke and she wasn't. She was like, what's so funny, sir? And I was like, oh, you're serious. <laughs> she was like, yes, we're very serious. So that should have warned me off, but it didn't. So I moved here and because of their on onerous laws, like you couldn't touch a gun. You cannot touch a firearm in a store in New Jersey. You can't go to the range. At, at that time, they were like, no, unless you have a firearms ID card, you can't even walk into a store and touch a firearm. None of the stores would allow it. And to get a firearms ID card, you need two references and you have to send in a bunch of paperwork to your local PD. You have to wait a minimum of 30 days. But um, the law says 30 days, but they make sure they stretch it. Jersey City has a waiting time of up to a year for them to do a background check and get back to you. So because of all of that, I didn't touch a gun for from 93 up until right before Sandy Hook. I, I really, I had my personal firearm <clears throat> that never left my house and that was it. Wow. So right before Sandy Hook, I got, I've got back into firearms. Um, I purchased a Ruger 1022. Uh, my friend, Sean, he runs blackbagresources.com, which, you know, sells a lot of tactical gear, gear. He teaches classes and we were tight. We met on a job site. And he had firearms and he allowed me to shoot some of his and that pretty much woke up the beast in me again to get involved in firearms. Okay. So I mm -hmm. go ahead. No, no, no. Oh, go ahead. Finish. Okay. So I got the uh, bug. I went and did all the paperwork that was required. And again, New Jersey law says it takes 30 days for the police to do a background check. That's the law. They have 30 days. 90 days later, I got my firearms ID card. And I was happy. I bought my rifle. I went to the range. I sucked the big one because it was a 20 year gap between, you know, the last time I shot in public and I took some classes. I took a NRA first steps rifle from my friend, Sean, and I got better and I really liked it. So I decided I wanted to be an instructor too. So I took the classes to be a firearms instructor. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much when the wheels fall off. Sandy hook happened and mm -hmm. the band hammer started being swung around the state house. Uh, they wanted to get rid of all magazines and limitations down from 15 to 10. Uh, they wanted to get rid of the 50 cal and everything over 50 caliber in diameter. I mean, it was just stupidity coming left and right. So I started on and rewrote a letter to our legislators, barely on social media. So what I did was copy the letter, posted it on Facebook and said, hey, if you are against you know, these magazines limitations coming down from the state. Here's a letter I wrote. Either use it as a template or just cut and paste it. I don't care. But get off your butts, become politically active, write your legislators. And that started my activism. Uh, I followed that up by going to one of their, um, not town hall meetings, but um, I think they call it the safety something. It, it was them trying to pass the bill. And okay. it was one of the first steps. So I went there and I testified and I did like three minutes telling them why what they were doing was stupid. And of course, there were 200 pro-gun people in a room and there were the same 11 Bloomberg supported anti-gun people telling the same lies that we all constantly hear gun people tell, anti-gun people tell. And um, they voted along, it went up the ladder and it passed. And it got to Chris Christie and because he was running for president and trying to pretend to be a Republican. Um, <laughs> <I like that. laughs> he vetoed it. Mm -hmm. He vetoed everything they had. He vetoed the 50 cal thing. He vetoed the magazine limitation thing. And um, the day was saved temporarily. Right. Well, okay. I realized mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> yeah, so I'm sitting there in a room full of 200 gun people waiting for everybody to do their three minutes. And I noticed I was the only African-American. Well, I say black, but a lot of people feel more comfortable with African-American. I don't know why. I'm good with black. <laughs> okay, cool. Black I was the only black guy in the room. That was, <laughs> I was the only black guy in the room that was pro-gun. And um, I was like, well, where's everybody else that I go to the range with on a weekly basis that happens to be black, Hispanic, Asian? Like, why aren't you guys here testifying? And no one came out. So I contacted the Second Amendment groups that I knew. And I'm like, hey, guys, do you have something to help recruit African-Americans, women, you know, I mean, just directly into the Second Amendment fight in the state? Because we say everyone's welcome, but when it's only older white dudes telling you you're welcome, you kind of sort of think they may be talking to only older white dudes, I guess. I don't know what it is. Um, but when people tell me I'm welcome, I show up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't figure they mean me. Right. But some people don't. Yeah. No, no one you know, I, it does make people going. feel. It makes people feel comfortable. So I can see, which is my training counselor, NRA training counselor who happened to be uh, Anthony Calandro from Gun For Hire, because that's where I went and had my certifications at. Mm -hmm. And my friend Sean said, uh, ask Anthony. Anthony's always behind anything pro Second Amendment. So on February 1st, I approached Anthony Calandro and I said, hey, can I put together an event that invites African-Americans to come out and actually be a part of the Second Amendment movement? I was like, I'll bring some guns. I'll run off some copies of a uh, firearms paperwork so you can start your permitting process. And I'll get some newsletters from the Second Amendment organization in New Jersey and hand those out. It's just information and hanging out. February 9th, we had our first event. It didn't take a week for him to go, yeah. I mean, instantaneously, he came up with a date, which was eight days later, and we had our first event with a total of six people. Um, I thought there would be more, of course, because, you know, on social media, you post an event, everyone says they're coming. But well, you thought so, it was going to go, you thought it was, was going to go friend. automatically viral? No, I thought the, the 26 people that said they were coming would actually show up. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the opposite of that, man. Yeah. 26 people, people say a lot of shit on social media that they don't do. They, in case you don't know, there's a lot of keyboard warriors. I, I learned. Yeah. Um, it was myself, Sean, the manager for Gun for Hire, and four guys that showed up. And that was okay. our very first event. But we passed out stuff. We had a great time. And we've been doing it every two months since 2015, since February 2015. Our last event we had about 60 people at. Um, we went from just me running photocopies off of paperwork to being supported by companies like CZ, um, CZ, Springfield Armory, Ruger, uh, and now Henry actually helped us out and donated a couple of rifles. That's cool. Um, and even High Point has given me a nine millimeter carbine to use for T&E just so I can introduce people into their product line. Right. So very cool. Very cool. That's what's happened. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. There's a lot of there's actually a lot of stuff there that I want to unpack. So but let me you know, first of all, let me like rewind and go back to the beginning. You said that um, you started out in the Marines, right? You went into the Marines at 17. Yeah. 17 years old. OK. Um, you know, I forgot to mention this uh, last night when we did the show, but it's definitely still out there in the news. I think we, we lost um, 16 Marines. Was it yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. When that? the yeah. went down? Yeah, in Mississippi. I mean, that's a horrible thing. You know, my, my heart goes out to the families of those people. You know, this is definitely like a really tragic thing, tragic news. I think there was another service member that was lost in that. Um, it was a Navy corpsman. Yeah, Navy Corman. Wow. So 17, 17 souls, you know, tough thing. So I, I know, you you know, you being a Marine, that's probably something that um, kind of probably hits you. I mean, it hits me deeply, man. What Do you want to say anything about that before we go forward? Well, I, I was in the Marine Corps Air Wing. So we did the whole, uh, depends on which bases you were on. We did fixed wing, which is jets and prop planes. And we also had helicopters. So what people don't understand is you can lose your life in the military through things like this or through combat. Yeah. Um, we, we lost a lot of people through training accidents, uh, equipment malfunctions, stuff like that. So if you have loved ones in the military, understand that they don't necessarily have to be in a combat zone to lose their lives. Uh, these guys, they're young. I mean, I know I was. 
like you're invincible until the wheels fall off. So, you yeah. know, just thank you. It, it's really weird as a service, as someone who was a service member, when people thank you. Oh, but for those guys, yeah, you should you should thank those guys that actively serve because really things happen. Yeah, it's things a tough job. And it's, uh, it's yeah, they're definitely risking their lives out there, even though it doesn't always seem like it. If it doesn't make the news, you know, we've got guys um, jumping around, going all over the country, all over the world all the time. And it's it's, you know, it's terrible when any news like this comes out, to be honest with you. But. You know, this is like a real tough one, I think. Yeah. I wonder how old that 130 was. Uh, yeah, that's that's a I good was, question. Yeah. Yeah. When I was in, we had old equipment, and I'm talking old. Uh, we had the OV-10 Broncos when I were in. They, those were, um, dang, how Vietnam do I put Kind of, four, yeah. They were, they were Vietnam vintage OV-10 Broncos. What, so pretty much, if you don't understand it, it's a lightweight prop plane that you kind of use as a forward observer for artillery and airstrikes. Or ground attack. Yeah. I was, yep, a ground attack plane also. Yeah. Well, one of them had a hole in it from a 23 millimeter cannon back in Vietnam that was sealed up with a Budweiser beer can wow. from back then. And you could, yeah, and it was still sealed with the same Budweiser beer can. <laughs> um, our helicopters were older than the pilots that were flying them because we had the um, CH-53s we had the Hueys and we had the Cobras and our Cobras were old. And I mean, people just don't understand that this is old equipment flown by young guys. Mm -hmm. And every time it goes up, it's fighting on the edge, it's flying on the edge. Yeah. And that's how we lose a lot of lives. Yeah. Right. I mean, we definitely need some upgrades and all that kind of stuff. You know, it, it's a tough thing, man. I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to, to touch on that a little bit. You know, I've got a lot of friends that are Marines, so. I know how those guys take in this pretty tough news. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Yeah. So, um, you know, try to spin back to something less horrible, <laughs> but still kind of horrible. New Jersey. Gun laws in New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Like so I'm pretty <laughs> nice sure there's people, there's people screaming at you, Tony. Like, you. okay, so you went to New Jersey, <laughs> was it, did you say 20 years ago? I moved to New Jersey. November 1st, 1993. 93. Oh, my goodness. That was uh, – <laughs> That was uh, – That was uh, – who, who was in there? Clinton. Yeah, Clinton. Clinton yeah. era. Yeah. That's that was right after they passed the assault weapons ban in New Jersey. Oh, okay. The horrible time. So I'm sure people out there want to know, like, why the hell are you still in New Jersey? Because you seem like a, like a genuine gun guy. What made you what made you stick in New Jersey, even though I mean the rules are pretty the rules are pretty uh, atrocious in my opinion in New Jersey? Um family. Um uh, my family my dad was here and he had a small business. My family has a small business. Um we're locksmiths, have been for a long time. Oh cool. Oh cool. yeah. So he was doing that. Me and my dad, you know, reconnected because the the family split up, but I came up here to meet him as an adult and see if we could make our relationship work. It took a while, but it did, mm -hmm. but it was really worth it to get to know my dad, to meet my new sisters and things like that. So it was family. No. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I mean, and that's, you know, that's the reason why I'm asking you about that because look, I know people say a lot like, Hey, just get the hell out of the state. <laughs> and, uh, for like full disclosure to everyone, I did, I, uh, Lola and I have lived in New Jersey. I think we went there in like 98 Lola. Um, to probably yeah, like 2003, 99. 99. So to 2003, our yeah. boys were born in New Jersey. They were actually born in Hoboken. <laughs> Hoboken. <laughs> you know, same hospital as uh, Frank Sinatra. Not that they really care, but I think it's cool. And yeah. so, you know, um, we we moved to New Jersey to get away from New York, and then I kind of felt like, hey, this is worse. And we wound up getting out of Jersey, but but for us, it, I think it was a lot easier. We didn't have family, and I think that's this is one of the questions here, right? People always say, "Well, why do people stay in these states?" But there's deep reasons sometimes that even though you're a genuine gun guy and you want to have more gun rights, you know, there's deeper reasons. Typically, you know, most often having to do with family, right? Oh yeah, um, family, job. Here's the thing: I started working for the state in '08. 
And they passed a rule right after the last governor was in, whose name was Corzine. Corzine was loaded. He was one of those golden. Yeah, I remember that executives. bastard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, real douche. Um, he never spent one night in New Jersey as governor. His girlfriend lived in New York, in Manhattan, and he, every day he would leave Jersey. So, of course, as a dig to him, one of the first laws they passed when Governor Christie came in was Jersey first, that you could not live outside the state. So they passed the bill and pretty much the sunset was like 2011. So now I have to get permission from the state to move out of the state. Wow. America. Uh, wait, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> I think I lost that there. You're saying you have to get permission from the state to move out of the state? If you're, I if have you're still to, working as, for the as state. A, as if you work for the state, you have to get permission from the state to move out of the state. Wow. Yeah, that's great. You know, this is one of the things that's happened. I mean, this happens to a lot of states. New Jersey has not had had the best history, right, Walter? I mean, I don't know how much you follow Jersey history being a Florida guy, but they, they haven't had pretty good history with, uh, with, with governors. It doesn't matter what political party they're in. They're all thieves for yeah. the most part. They're crooks. Yeah. yeah. So, the, I mean, that's really one of the bad things with Jersey. You know, do you want to talk to us about the laws in Jersey? I mean, obviously, you know, it's, a, it's, it's America, so there's supposed okay. to be some rights. What are the gun laws in New Jersey? How, what do they look like? Um, gun laws in New Jersey. Can you, right, can you, um, can, do you have to have a permit to buy rifles? You have to have a firearms ID card to buy rifles. You don't need a permit. But, of course, rifles have to be Jersey legal. So okay. that pretty much means your AR-15, it has to have a fixed or a pinned buttstock. No okay, so they have that stock. stupid, like, no, uh, no. assault assault weapons uh, classification? No bayonet lugs and things like that? <laughs> they they actually adopted the Clinton assault ban. Okay. So you have that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, if you have an SKS, you can put a kit on it to have a pistol grip on your SKS, but you can't have a detachable magazine on your SKS. Um, detachable magazine turns the SKS into an assault rifle. Even if you leave it in its original configuration and only put a detachable magazine on it, it becomes an assault rifle. The stupidity of it all. Um, AR pistols, good luck with that because your AR pistol can't weigh more than 52 uh -oh. ounces. Oh, and that's, it, uh -oh. and yeah. it can't have a foregrip. Yeah, that's, it can't that's, have a handguard. That's old assault weapon stuff there, the weight mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, it can't have a handguard either. So pretty much you're going to have an exposed gas tube and a what? hot <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. – you know, Olympic Arms made a gun just to get around that. They drilled everything out. They left the handguard off, everything. And, yes, really really silly. Um, that Those are just some of the stupid laws. Oh, hollow points. You cannot have a hollow point outside of the range or your home. Like if you buy the ammo, you somehow have to transport yourself instantaneously to the range or home. You can get pulled over and arrested in New Jersey if you have a keychain with an inert bullet in it with a hollow point round. You can go to jail. Okay, that's crazy. For five years. How's the um, how's the handgun laws and is how is it to get a CCW? <laughs> 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 this is a loaded question. <laughs> You know the answer. That's why you're laughing. <laughs> That's why I don't live. This is why I don't live in New Jersey, dude. <laughs> Guns. Ask Lola. I came home from Florida one day. I was on a I was on a trip. I used to do hip hop music. Um, and I was I was in Florida and I came back and I was like, that's it. I can't freaking live in this state, man. I'm gonna live <laughs> in Florida where I can have guns like a real man. <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> so there are nine million residents in New Jersey. One million of them own firearms, and about twelve to seventeen hundred have concealed carry permits. Wow, there's a huge discrepancy. Yeah, so it's May <laughs> issue, obviously May. It's 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 May issue, and the answer is no. Don't ask me again. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Because um, they won't even bother. Mm -hmm. uh, it starts with your police department not even wanting to give you the paperwork. They're not calling you back. I mean, it's constant harassment. It's it's like guerrilla warfare. Um, are, are you a member of the uh, New Jersey Second Amendment? Uh, what is the group? The group there, Second Amendment Society. 
The New Jersey Second Amendment Society is a group of his own. I, I joined that years ago. Myself okay. and Alexander Rubian, who's the president, are friends and friendly. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, we had dinner, uh, what, three weeks ago with Dr. John Adine of the Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership. We actually all got together and had dinner, which was really cool. Yeah. Um, I'm also close with ANJRPC, which is the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Club Owners, which is the NRA chapter in New Jersey. So, I mean, there's people in New Jersey trying to fight, you know, to, to change these laws. And I yeah. think the uh, Second Amendment Society has been, I, I think I've read some lawsuits and things like that. that they've been. <laughs> yeah, Alexander has been a real thorn in their side with a NJ, um, 2 as and also like CNJF, CNJFO, which is a coalition of New Jersey firearms owners. These guys are just working on that justifiable need because that's one of the clauses they say you have to uh, pass to get a pistol, per, a pistol, a carry permit. And they said you have to show a justifiable need why you need to carry a gun. Okay. And it really falls under Hank Strange is trying to kill me. And he's not arrested yet, and you guys don't know where he is, so I need to carry a gun at all times because I think Hank Strange is going to kill me. And the judge will go, yeah, no, we don't think so. Good luck, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and that's it. So yeah. that's the kind of thing. So CNJFO is trying to get rid of that. Because for, for a long time, I think and, New Jersey uh, didn't want to tell people what was the criteria for getting a concealed permit, right? They wouldn't. They wouldn't tell you the criteria. Uh, it's one of those things that's supposed to be open record. And uh, NJ2AS actually sued them, I think, or ANJRPC actually sued the state police to get that information. Okay. Um. Someone's asking the question: Do you need a gun license to own an air gun? An airsoft. An air. Okay. Uh, here is, it is it airsoft or air gun? Yeah, airsoft gun. All right. Yeah. There's a confusion. He's asking about airsoft. No, you don't need one for airsoft, but mm. you do need one for a pellet gun or a BB gun. BB you need gun. to have a pistol purchase yeah. permit if you yeah. buy one in the state of New Jersey. And here's the silliness of it. But I can cross the border, go into Cabela's in PA and buy one and bring it home. And bring I have back. not broken the law whatsoever. OK, so so then what what is you know, what's the purpose of that? Like what what's the rationalization? OK. Harassment, just straight harassment. That's what the state does. They make it impossible. They make it uncomfortable. Um, and the regulations this is what my township did which was totally against the written law right where are you in new jersey I, you don't have to give us specifics <laughs> but what part of jersey are you in i'm in central jersey if you're okay. from jersey you understand what i'm about to say yeah I'm i used to i used to live in i used to live in linden and roselle in new jersey and uh you yep. know not far from um i lived in linden not far from rawway and in right roselle, down route one yeah roselle was not far from um from uh, what what is it again? Not I was gonna say Newark. Everyone says they're from Newark in New Jersey when they want to be a badass. Yeah, when but, they want to be cool. Yeah, what was that place in Jersey that uh, these guys lived? I forgot now. Yeah, Elizabeth. So go ahead. Anyway, um, yeah, what we're talking about? Okay, yeah, I'm from Exit Nine. That's where that's where I'm at. By the middle. Yeah, right. So not far. We're in the same same yeah, area. Mm -hmm. Same area code. Everything. Yeah. Um, that's where I'm from. Well, the township decided that not only do they want to do what the state said, they wanted to make up their own rules. And one of the things they did was contact my supervisor at work and send them a letter saying that I wanted to buy a handgun. And was it OK if I purchased one? Wow. That's so he, <laughs> none, go of ahead, his, Walter. none of his damn business. Yeah, well, that's, like some, some, yeah that's, it, right, Nazi, right. that's some Nazi type stuff right there. Right, right. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. just. That's just crazy crap. Um, yeah, it was 100% against the law what they did. Yeah, I but, mean, that puts your job in danger of people thinking, mm -hmm. oh, you know, this guy, and into all kinds of nonsense. Um, did it's that ridiculous. create any problems for you at work? I'm sure it did. No, um, no, okay. no, not at all. <clears throat> not at all. Okay. Where I work at, I'd already established what kind of person I was. And I was pretty vocal about my pro Second Amendment stance, but in a reasonable way. I'm mm. not the guy that gets in your face and makes an argument and screams, you know, Molan Labe and, <laughs> <laughs> and tattoos about right. yourself and everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, Molan um, Labe and vote uh, from the rooftops. That's not me. Oh, well, so. Okay, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with those kinds of guys. Cause some of us in this room are those kinds of guys. <laughs> Yeah, just because but of that's why we don't work not, regular jobs. <laughs> uh huh. That would not have turned out well for me at that job. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, so, I mean, you know what's the crazy thing? Here's the thing about New Jersey. I mean, and I'm sure there's some super safe parts of New Jersey, maybe. I don't know. But mm-hmm. uh, uh, there's a lot of people that live in New Jersey that just don't feel safe. Like you were saying, you have to rationalize to these guys why you feel like you have to, you know, like you need to protect yourself. I mean, are they looking at the news at all? Do they read the news that's going on in New Jersey? Do they see the dangers that people are facing? They don't care. They don't care, yeah. Why? If you're a hardworking citizen, mm-hmm. if you're a hardworking citizen, go to work every day, pay your bills, you're not special. You're, you're, you're the cow they milk for the money that the state runs on. Just shut up, get back, eat out of your trough, and let me milk all the money out of you. Um, special interests are at the bottom and at the top. You know, in New Jersey, we have pharmaceutical companies. That's huge here. Yeah. And and we have the... Um, you have uh, a petroleum. big petroleum, petroleum, petroleum industry. You also uh-huh. have uh, a lot of prisons. Railway oh, prisons, we have, for example. <laughs> railway, uh, Trenton. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, have, we have 12 prisons uh, in the state, just state prisons. So it's industry. Wow. They don't care about the yeah. individual. Yeah, Walter. Walter really is don't. Walter is surprised at the amount of prisons. No, Jersey is a prison state, right? Oh, big time, baby, big time. I saw I saw one a map one time in New Jersey about the toxic waste dumps. Yeah, in oh, New yeah. Jersey, and it covered the whole state. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of waste. Um, New York, I, I think mob, all of New York's waste run, goes there. Yeah, yeah. The mob used to run all that, and they used to use New Jersey for their dumping grounds. So. Yeah, before they passed a lot of rules back in the day, New Jersey. Yeah. New Jersey was a dumping ground. Yeah. That's, you know, that's the thing. I, I don't know, man. It's so what do you think? What can we do about this Jersey thing? You've obviously been there for a long time trying to find. Is anything getting better? Are we making, are we getting any headway here? Well, what we're doing, or what I'm doing with what I, or, uh, the diversity shoot and the second is for everyone is actually bringing new people in. Uh, I'm bringing new people in regardless of their age, their sex, their race, their gender, you know, their sexuality. I don't care. What I'm trying to do is get new people in. Um, if you're su- yeah, if you're super liberal, I want you here so we can talk about this. Um, at my events, I bring in the NRA ILA. They actually send their rep down, which is awesome. Uh, Christopher uh, Christian Ragoza, he comes down and he makes an appearance and he answers all the questions anybody has about the NRA. Um, we have local groups like NJ uh, 2AS Alexander. He's come and spoken many times. We have various groups speak. That way, if you have any Second Amendment questions, this is the room to ask them in. We have Second Amendment women's group come in and they speak and they try to make everyone feel welcome. And that's my whole thing is recruit. And then when you start talking about these laws, even the most liberal person goes, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense that you can't have a BB gun here without a pistol purchase. Yeah. Someone, about, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Walter. Go ahead. About, I know in, in, in New York City, you can't even have a slingshot. Um, is it that crazy in Jersey, too, or? You can't have a slingshot in New Jersey. In New Jersey, a slingshot falls under the assault weapons ban. No. Yes, it does. It's 100% illegal, and you get five years for it. <laughs> what? A slingshot? Yes, a slingshot. No. You also can't have, you can't have a dagger or a dirk <clears throat> or a switchblade. So that means anything with double-sided knives, you can't have them in Jersey. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> wow, that's crazy. You can uh, hunt I... with a... Go ahead. You can hunt with an air gun. But you can't hunt with an air gun that has an integrated suppressor. Yeah, suppressors. Well, a lot it, of NFA stuff is um, is no go, right? Yeah, no, no, every, but no, it's not. Yeah. But it's not NFA if it's on an air gun. I can buy the darn thing at Walmart. It's not an right. NFA. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> no, but also, but also, yeah. you can't have any NFA things. There, no, right? no AOWs, no short barrel shotguns. No. Well, I thought they left AOWs no. out of the law. What's going on? What's the deal with that? I wouldn't know, mm-hmm. and I don't want to play with Jersey okay. because they will just lock you up. Okay. Now, everybody so loves Governor Christie when they talk about, oh, he's he's pardoned so many people, and 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 people go, he's pardoned people. He's not pardoned anyone from New Jersey. <laughs> he pardons people from outside the state. If you live in a state, it really doesn't make big enough news for them to go out of their way to pardon you. That I know about. I could be wrong, but all the big cases I've heard about in New Jersey, like Shanine Allen, when she got arrested, she got pardoned after a big stink was made about from Second Amendment people all across the country. Um, 
she got pardoned by Governor Christie. Uh, they had a guy that came up from North Carolina during right after Tropical Storm Sandy, and he brought his firearm with him because, well, he's smart and he was coming to New Jersey. And mm-hmm. uh, he got arrested, and they tried to give him five years, and he got pardoned by the governor. But as far as I remember, nobody from New Jersey, and I could be wrong, but I don't remember hearing a lot of people from New Jersey getting pardoned when they got caught in the stupidity. Right. Last year, we had a 75-year-old retired English teacher who was into old documents around uh, Revolutionary War documents. Oh, yeah. Well, as a combo buy, he bought a black powder flintlock pistol with that the guy was selling the documents and said hey you want this pistol too because this belongs to so-and-so and and we don't want it he was like sure he throws it in his glove compartment and promptly forgets about it because he was never in the market for that anyway you know what i mean it's not a pistol to him it's a prop Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he gets pulled over by the police he reaches for his glove compartment and this whole thing falls out and you know wrapped in a rag cop says what's that he goes oh it's a pretty much a prop and he tells him what it is and the guy says no problem next day they come and arrest him and they try to prosecute him for carrying an illegal firearm um uh, they're gonna powder. break it off in this old guy for five years yeah, a, black powder? a black powder flintlock yeah because he wouldn't ca- he was not carrying it in accordance to new jersey state law somehow it should be separated from the powder in the trunk not accessed <laughs> by the in the it was ridiculous. It got to the point that the DA wanted to take the gun and have Abby Shudo <laughs> from NC what CSI NCSI uh, test it to see if it was ever used in a crime. They were going to fire around. <laughs> a crime it. when in like eighteen twenty two. A, a smoothbore pistol, right? They're yeah. Gonna find... Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh okay. man, that is so stupid. Um, someone <laughs> someone has this comment here. They say, wait, so pellet, so no pellet guns or BB guns. Do they believe you will shoot your eye out? <laughs> yeah, that was funny. It is ridiculous. So, so okay. So now, here's the thing. Like we were saying before, that you're there. There's lots of people there. Do you feel like anything could be done? I mean, obviously, you're 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 there and you're fighting. You know, what can we do to help you out with this fight? And what do you think of the chances here of making something happen? Obviously, you're trying to win hearts and minds and all that. Well, stuff. that's my whole thing. It's win hearts and minds. Mm-hmm. I. This thing did not start by me to be anything other than giving out information. There, there was no, hey, you know what? I'm going to start a thing where I can make money and, and, and build this. I never thought about how I would fund this. I just figured I'd host this event and it will work. Well, it's grown. It, it's grown much bigger. And I've been paying for everything that I do out of my overtime checks or over my tax returns. That, mm-hmm. That's how I've been funding this for the last three years. Now it's grown bigger and bigger. Um, I'm going to have multiple places in the state that actually wants to host this. And I'm having my first one out in Lancaster County, PA, uh, later this year. So what I decided, we came up with a logo. Uh, Ryan Cross did from Hunter of Design. Same guy who's behind Patriot Patch Company's design. He came out with our logo. And um, I'm making shirts right now for a limited time until August 30th. You can go to diversityshoot.com and pick up a shirt. The price is 25 bucks, and it goes all the way up to 6X because I had to get a shirt big enough for me to wear. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you know, I hope you represent for the big brothers out there. <laughs> yeah. Because that would be ironic if you weren't, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to find somebody big enough for us, and uh, yeah. it's not even extra charge for it. It's just 25 bucks straight across the board, no matter what size you get. And again, shipping's included. Um, I get a little bit off of that, and hopefully that will help pay for some of the ammo or some of the cost of what we do. Because we host an event, and it's pretty cool. This is what we do when you roll in the door at Gun for Hire. You fill out the paperwork, you know what I mean, the the forms, talk about safety, whole thing. You fill that out with all your information. You come into our classroom and you get, if you're the first 10, you get a special bag that has cool gifts in it. And if you're after the first 10, you still get a bag like with swag in it, with catalogs from different companies that actually support us with stickers, things like that. And that's just walking in the door. Oh, by the way, the whole event is 10 bucks and that 10 bucks goes to the range. It does not come to me. Okay, cool. Um, so that's how you that's how you deal with uh, getting people in the door. With, yeah, like, we, get, an incentive. we give you stuff. We yeah. give you stuff. Goodie bags. Goodie bags. You get that. You come sit down. You talk to the people that are there. And in comes the pizza and the soda. We provide uh, food for everybody. 
we let people talk, hang out, and then we start the show. So uh, how do you how do you get the stuff for the goodie bags? I mean, how are you able to do that? Goodie bags is me making phone calls on my days off continually to every company out there. I, you name a company, I've probably called them or contacted them. Okay, so you're America. like you would accept you would accept stuff from companies. So if companies have swag and stuff like that, patches, 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 yeah, yep. uh, patches are great. I give patches away left and right. I have some Geisley patches now. I have all. Well, I think stuff. I think we can help you with some Safety Harbor patches, oh. right, Walter? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, and and definitely, <laughs> I want to encourage anyone that's watching this, any companies that are watching. I think this is, I think this is a good cause because we can't just abandon these states, you know, and, <laughs> and leave it to these tyrants, you know, these bastards that are running these states to do what they're doing. We've got to encourage people to come into the fold and realize that the Second Amendment is for them, that it's a right that they're giving up to these people, and this is a good way to do it. I think, in my opinion, so. You know, I'd like to encourage people to help you out with this one. What, what, how do people help you out? How do they get this stuff to you? All right. <clears throat> get this stuff to me. I'm going to go ahead and post an address up. Um, it'll be on. I'll probably post it on here. You can send it to my friend, Sean Blackbag Resources. We can do that because I don't have a bill box set up yet. You know what I mean? Again, this is okay. just me hosting a party. That's what this falls under. Trust me. That's what my tax lady told me this year when I tried to write it <laughs> off. She's like, I'm yeah. sorry, honey. This is just a hobby. I'm like, really? You know how much I spend on this darn hobby? Anyway, <laughs> um, so we got that set up. We have a donate button on diversityshoot.com. You can help me out there. Um, I need ammo. Uh, 22 9 millimeter, uh, some 45, 223, and 308. Not so much 308, but yeah, it does need help. <laughs> Right. But um, where so where are you guys with all these rules and stuff like that that's going on? Where are you guys actually getting together and shooting? We get together at different ranges. I teach at range 14. I'm also a firearms instructor. I obviously said that earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do classes at range 14 on Fort Dix. So that's pretty cool. Um, we have some indoor ranges like Gun for Hire range. We have RTSP uh, in Randolph, New Jersey. Uh, we have uh, what's the other one? Garden State Shooting Center, they're big. They're down in South Jersey. And we also have uh, another one in Little Lake Harbor. So we have quality ranges. We have really nice ranges here. It's just kind of expensive. Those are the indoor ranges, by the way. And then we have a bunch of outdoor ranges, which are great, like Old Bridge Shooting Club and um, I forgot Jackson. There's another one in Jackson. I can't think of the name of it. Okay. But but it's it's we have ranges. They're expensive. The only one that's not expensive is the one on Fort Dix, and that's because it's on a military base. And, of course, it, you know, it's paid for mostly by the military. Okay. And then so what are the rules to people going there to shoot? I mean, do they have to have special <coughs> things? I think you said something earlier about having to have a special something to even touch the gun. Firearms. Well, that was a firearms ID card, and that mm -hmm. was just certain – Certain ranges or cer certain ranges had that Fort Dix does not have that. So I can bring in new shooters and I can allow, you know, teach them how to shoot because of course they don't have a firearms ID card. They've not been through this yet. Yeah. And, and, and some are, and that's just a range rule. That is not a state rule. I don't think. Right. Okay. That just. Yeah. Matter. Let me let Walter, I'm sure you have some questions about this. I know you're kind of, you're kind of incredulous over there. No, that's all right. <laughs> um, in, in Jersey, do they have, Issues with uh, purchasing ammunition, like through mail order and stuff like that. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> purchasing through the mail is fine. You know, I sent them a copy of my ID, uh, my firearms ID card and, and my driver's license, which I think everybody has to do if you buy ammo online anyway. And it's dropped off at my house. It makes no difference, you know, <laughs> except the UPS guy curses me out every time I buy a case of Mosin ammo. Um, yeah, yeah he wimp. hates me. He's a wimp. <laughs> he hates me. He don't know me. <laughs> Tell him he's delivering freedom, damn it. <laughs> well, it, well, it's not only that, but also catalogs like Brownells. Uh, Browning. Browning sent me their gigantic catalog with everything Browning makes. They sent yeah. me 100 catalogs. Dude had to make four trips. Oh, he was heated. <laughs> um, we also, if you buy pistol ammo in the store, you have to give them your firearms ID and driver's license and sign for it. That ticks me off to no end that I have to sign for pistol ammo. I don't have to sign for rifle ammo, which is, of course, more powerful, but I have to sign for pistol ammo. 
This is some Gestapo stuff, man. How do you yeah, feel when you're in other states that are free? Go ahead, Walter. Go ahead. Florida used to have that where you had to sign a book when you bought ammo years mm -hmm. ago. Years, years and years ago. Yeah, but they did away with all that. So yeah, that was horrible. yeah. That's yeah. That's why I go to the PA and buy all of my ammo. Right, right. You <laughs> cro cross the I go over the go over the river and go purchase some ammo, right? Yeah. I mean, and lots I, of I people in Jersey go across, you know, across state lines to probably mm -hmm. like uh, Delaware. Uh, Pennsylvania and stuff like that to do things, right? Yeah, you, you got to get out of here. The rules are just stupid. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, and it, it, it's a little annoying when people go, why don't you move? Understand this. As dumb as these laws are, they start in places like California, New York, and New Jersey, yeah. and they spread across the country because politicians are nothing but unimaginative. So, of course, they can't think anything new, so they just push something that passed somewhere else. And, and the very same people that go, hey, they just passed this in California, so it must be better. They ignore the fact that it didn't work in California. They ignore the fact that those laws don't work anywhere. Mm -hmm. And they just keep pushing the same agenda over and over again. And the sad part is, and this is one of the things I do for the second is for everyone, is educate gun owners. Because some of us are ignorant of what actually is happening. I had a guy tell me the other day, and he's an Obama fan, which is fine. He goes, they said Obama was trying to take your guns, and he didn't try to take your guns. And I was like, really? I was like, you don't have to try to take me? Them. I said, you don't have to try to actually go after the gun itself if you go after everything that has anything to do with a firearm, including Operation Choke Point, which will just stop people from actually dealing in firearms in any way. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, you, you can keep your gun if you can't put a bullet in it. You can't buy any ammo for it. You can't take a class because or the gun or, the, or you can't your gun shop can't run a charge card because they charge won't take. Card. Right. Exactly. Right. Or, the, or the bank cancels your account because you're a firearms dealer or whatever, you know? It's yeah. Like, or they refuse to give you one in the first right, place. Right. I heard that before. And I've that's one that. of the things I do. I have to put that out there. Another thing is uh, the NRA ILA has a really cool card. Um, and they had it in 2016. I don't know if they're remaking another one. And it has like 10 different arguments or 10 different anti-gun statements that they make and our argument for it. Because sometimes we need that. I mean, if you, of course, follow social media, someone will say something anti-gun, anti-civil rights. And one of our gun people will jump on and say one of some of the most ignorant stuff you've ever seen. And it's not really an argument. It becomes a personal attack understand maybe someone was asking a question and just got the terminology wrong and they said clip an assault rifle or something like that you can't take everything personally and you have to go i have to educate you you have to take that tact yeah i mean you don't have to you can do what you want it's online but if you're a jerk understand all people are going to see is you being a jerk yeah i think uh, i totally agree with you um i actually saw that today i was in the in the gun store and some young kids came in there and, you know, they were looking at all these guns and asking all these questions. Um, some young, young black men, probably in the age category of my sons. And they, they, they pretty much asked the guys in the store to look at every gun, and they asked questions <laughs> about everything. And I was like proud of the guys in the store because they were very patient, answered every single question, you know, talked to these, to these kids, you know, told them about safety, explained everything more than once, several times, you know, let them pretty much take like, oh, I want to look at this. I want to look at this. And I thought it was awesome because that experience there is how you start to, to win someone over to our side, right? You have to be really tolerant. Um, and I'll go ahead and admit, yeah, sometimes it is tiring because you're answering the same question for the 1500th oh. time. <laughs> but it may be the first time that person asked that question ever. And if you're a jackass about it, yeah, they, you might put a bad taste in their mouth forever about firearms owners. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like all of us have to be recruiters. Mm -hmm. It's it's our job. I'm sorry, but we have to make the Second Amendment grow. Supposedly there are 100 million gun owners in this country, or well, there's 200 million people who aren't gun owners, and we need to change that. You know, if yeah. each one of us, if each one of us brings one over to the dark side. <laughs> yeah, what do you think about this, There'll Walter? I sense, I, sense, I sense Walter is, is tired of answering questions. Is that what it is? Uh, oh, oh, answer, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, um, well, part of the reason I don't do retail is just for the what you just mentioned, um, hmm. the tire kicking thing. 
Um, um, mm-hmm. But that's just me. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it is tough. There are some people <laughs> that are not built for it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Walter, <laughs> go ahead. No, I mean, people ask me what what kind of what kind of nine millimeter should I get? It's like I don't know. You get you got to go look. You got to go and find out yourself, and then come back, and I'll get you anything. But you know, because I can order things. Um, yeah. But um, what we talked to right before the um, um, right before we went, you asked me that. Um, you guys were talking about something else. What was it? Not the retail thing, but um, oh, I think taking people out to the range, like new people. You know, okay. it, it's always good to just if somebody doesn't know, just take them out, let them shoot. You know, and then they go, yeah. oh wow, this is cool. You know, <clears> especially, throat> women, throat> especially women. Women are like they're in when they when they exactly. go out and go shooting, they get empowered. Yeah, uh, and it's like, amen. Oh wow, yeah, yeah this is cool. I but that's, a, that's I something shoot. you that's something you do a lot, Walter. I notice you like you know introduce people to a lot of cool things about guns. You're always doing yeah, that I mean, at the you expense know. of your own ammo. Right. You know, if you're, you're pretty it, generous with that ammo. I notice yeah, that. Well, you know, if like if I let somebody shoot the Sten guns and stuff, and it's the first time, they're hooked. Then, you know, yeah. forget about the <laughs> forget about the bold actions. They're they're past go now. They want they want to go right to the good stuff. <laughs> so. <laughs> And, and they want and, to they want to know like how come they can't have those things. You know what? When I th- when I saw those kids in there, you know what I thought about? I remember um the first time I went into like a really expensive car dealership. I went into a um a BMW dealership in Manhattan. I think it was like off Fifth I don't know, Fifth Avenue or 42nd Street, something like that. And I was looking at those cars and, and, you know, I mean, I think I was probably 16 or 17 years old and I was like, yeah, I'll never, I could probably never own something like this, but I looked at it and I had this dream, you know, this thing in my brain that I would be able to have these things. And, you know, since then I've, I mean, you know, nowadays you, I can go into, go in and, and buy a really nice car. And I think that's where it starts. And I think it's the same thing with guns, like with those kids, they're going in there, they're seeing all these things. They were asking a bunch of questions and, and when they were getting the real deal, because they have this total misconception from the movies. Well, another thing you mentioned about the looking at the cars, um, it's kind of like you had a dream, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I have a dream. I have a dream to get myself a nice car. So you don't want to be the dream stealer. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll, you know, if, if you want to get machine guns, you know, just save your money and, and be patient and you get it. You know, it's just, you know, you can do this as long as, as long as we don't let people take away. I mean, we've, we've look, Walter, you know this cause you were around in 1986. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, that's something that we I, I lost. Have, these, these kids I, asked about that today and I told them, no, I mean, in back in the eighties, people lost the ability yeah. to do that for the most yeah, part. I didn't, I didn't have a pot to pee in in 1986. So well, I was hanging out with my friends living in a house with guys and just partying and having fun. So I didn't have four hundred dollars for a Sten gun because that's what they were then. Yeah, but was, you, did you want them? You were into guns back then, right? Oh yeah, I had I had HK ninety one, an AK, all that stuff. But I just um, the paperwork was always a pain in the butt too, um, mm-hmm. dealing with ATF and all that. But I didn't have enough discipline at that time <laughs> um, to, to get the money together and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I think you I think you had that dream, and that's the real important thing about this because. Like for what Tony's doing, if you expose people to this, they have this dream and they're like, oh, I could do this. And then people start saying, no, you can't. And they're like, wait a second. Wh- why are you telling me I can't do this? Right. You can do it. I mean, a place like New Jersey would be a place where you say, well, I can't you can't do it. It's like, well, yeah, you can. You just need to jump through a lot of hoops mm-hmm. but you can do it still. And the more yeah. people you, you said, there's a million gun owners in New Jersey. <laughs> Million gun owners in New Jersey. Okay, so if you if you, do, if you if you can get those million gun owners active and vote, <laughs> yeah, that's the, no, that's I, a I good mean, question. Same, but it's part of it, you know. You could change things in New Jersey. Well, do they? Okay, so are these legal <laughs> gun owners, or what are we what are we talking here? <laughs> of course, are these of people are these people are these people who vote. <laughs> that's a well, lot that's of high. That's part. a lot of high point owners. You know, what I'm saying? Yeah. that's the sad part. That is the sad part about pretty much gun owners and voters. I also work the election polls and I see how many people sit on their butts and don't do anything. We just had the primary here, less than 12% of the people voted in the primary. It makes no difference if you're a gun owner, if you're not politically active and voting for your gun rights. Yeah. So sitting on your tuchus at home and going, well, I got mine. 
Yeah, right, I don't have yeah. a black rifle. I have a revolver. I'm a I'm a revolver guy. I got a duck gun. I got yeah. my shotgun. You know, it's like I I hate that. Mm -hmm. I got my hunting rifle. It's like, and my hunting rifle is, you know, that's not your black rifle. You know, it's yeah. So I'm fine. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You just keep thinking that your hunting yeah. your hunting rifle has a scope on it, and guess what they're gonna say in the media? It's a sniper's rifle. Right. Well. Um. Yeah. If, it, they've, come for, if they've come for the BB guns, we're way past yeah. all that. If you so, can't have a, if you can't have a slingshot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you can't have a, I mean, come on, man. That goes back to uh, what is it, David? What, David so, and Goliath. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can't have a uh, put a rock in a like a Palestinian um, protester, and I can't have one. <laughs> you can't. Things. You can't even think bad thoughts. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's okay, ridiculous. Yeah. Someone <laughs> asked this question: What are the laws on reloading and reloading supplies in New Jersey? You can reload. I mean, I have friends that reload, so that's fine. I'm sure there's the same laws to do with, you know, how much powder you can have in one spot and all that stuff. But uh, okay. you can reload, no problem. Okay. All right. That's... You can do. You can shoot black powder, no problem. Okay. I want to. I want to transition into a couple of things here. I mean, we can come back to this if if the folks have more questions on this. Um, sure. Someone just brought up. I think it was Walter. High points. <laughs> oh. Of course he did. <laughs> High point owner. <laughs> yes. We promised. We promised the people we would speak of high points. <laughs> uh, if you ever want someone who's an intelligent firearms owner to lose their effing mind, <laughs> post a picture of a high point and they will lose their ish and they can't hold yeah. it together. And they'll say some of the most unintelligent and unintelligible stuff you could ever find. There's a deep hate. There's a um, deep hate by the people out there for high points. Well, my boy told me this. He said it's called recreational hate. They love slamming it. And it makes no difference. If physically. They, they like physically slamming them. Yeah. Meanwhile. High points, high points are the Hillary Clintons of the gun world. Oh, no, I don't go that far. <laughs> no, no, they're not that high point is the high point. I'm dangerous. sure if high point watches, it's like Hank Strange. If we oh, you ain't you, never getting. If we see you at Shot Show, Hank Strange, you are getting beat down. <laughs> out of our booth. Oh yeah. Out of here. <laughs> so uh, you listen. Uh, I have a high point. Um, I bought. I have a high point nine millimeter uh, pistol. I bought it when I wanted to do a challenge to see if you can buy a gun for a hundred bucks or less. Because there's a lot of people out there that say that the what bars them from entry into into what we do is the price. So I went out mm -hmm. there and I looked for something and I and I wound up finding a high point. Um, before you, before you talk about them, um, I don't know if Walter Walter, do you have any experience with high points? Um, first time I shot one was last weekend. Okay, so the 904 outdoor guys popped your cherry. You yeah. you, you popped their cherry on the stain gun. <laughs> but the funny part is, <laughs> and they you know, popped your cherry on the high point. Yeah, that was look like at that. That wasn't fair. Was yeah. that wasn't fair. But no, they but, owe you big time. <laughs> <laughs> they well, owe you they, big they, time. they owe me a high point that works more than one shot in a, a time. Yeah, they owe you. They owe you. We need to take one of their high points and blow them up. That's what they owe you. <laughs> so you don't you don't have any experience with high point. What, what did you think when you shot the high point, Walter? Before I get into this. Well, like I said, it didn't it didn't want to cycle right. Um, it looked like it had some feed ramp issues. Um, and you saw what I did to make it work. I got mad and started cussing and turned it sideways. Oh, you went gangster. You went and it gangster. shot like six or seven rounds in a row. Yeah. It was funny as did hell. We, did, did we that. write you a ghetto pass? I don't remember writing you that ghetto pass <laughs> so you can go sit down and just mess with you. Is that a tattoo I get or something? Or <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. You um, don't want to know what you get. <laughs> you, oh, know, okay. you know that saying, when you go black, you never go back? You don't, uh, don't want to, you I don't don't. to know what that really means, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> What is that term for the brothers that are that are? What's that term for the brothers that are lying about what they like? Uh, uh, oh, I don't. Uh, you know, the brothers that are that are really gay, but they play they play. Uh, oh, uh, on the download. On the download. <laughs> on the download. <laughs> what? Are you, okay, wait a second. What are you trying to say? I have no idea what this has to do. What, what, yeah. what are we talking? What are you trying about? to say, Walter? No. I, I, let's go back to shooting. Yeah. No, just, yeah. Please, please do. No. Okay, I'm just messing with you. That was funny. I had to, you know, I have to take like every chance to mess with Walter possible. Oh yeah, well, you know, it comes around, goes around. So. Yeah, I know, I know. You're gonna think I'll, of ways to get back to me. I'll get you. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. Uh, okay, so my experience with the high point, I bought this high point. Um, 
I was actually shooting um, some uh, some other kind of gun, and it didn't work at all. The high point did work. Where I ran into problems with it is when we went to we went to um, do a takedown video of it and put it back together, and that thing like it's very notoriously difficult to take <laughs> apart. All the parts flew all over the place. There were parts that mystically like disappeared into another dimension. <laughs> But the good thing I will say about High Point is, I mean, and I bought I bought it used, right? Because it was under 100 bucks. I don't know what a brand new nine millimeter High Point is. Maybe 125 bucks. Yeah, 100 and a half. Yep, like right about that. Yeah, but um, I bought it used, and High Point didn't ask me any of that. They were like, okay, and they sent me parts. So you know, I, I didn't I, I didn't have a I haven't had a High Point, but I had another um, cheap, inexpensive 380 um, back at years ago. And I had kind of the same thing. I bought it and it didn't work right. I called them up. I sent them to them. They fixed it, hundred percent. Yeah. Sent it back. No problem. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think it was a Davis. That's what it was. It was a Davis. Yeah. And I think we're getting comments like someone said Demo Ranch shot one in the side and it still worked, which is true. Um, Iraq veteran also did like famous videos with um, the High Point. Oh, Iraqi when, veteran. Yeah, Iraq veteran. Yeah, when uh, Barry was still there, like they, I think they fried it, microwaved it. <laughs> They, yeah, they they melted it down until it just was a blob. Yeah, oh, okay. and, yeah. and guess what? And guess what? High point did. Gave him another one. Replay. Boom. Yeah. Yep. Well, you, you know, you, you, it's funny. You know, you're sitting there saying high point, high point, high point, high point, high point. The more you say it, the more people hear it, and the more people are gonna check it out. Yeah. And that's that's what made me get mine. Um, I just wanted a range pistol. Right. I wanted to work on my marksmanship. I had their ten twenty two. And that was cool. I had the Mosin the Gant, but you know, I was going to practice on a 1022. I had a lot of fun shooting the Mosin because the ammo didn't cost that much. Right. And after Sandy Hook, the ammo was cheaper for a Mosin and easier it was to for find 22. Than it was for 22. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. tell me about it. <laughs> but then I, I picked up my high point because fundamentals are fundamentals. It makes no difference what yeah. pistol you're using, a high point or a uh, Cabot Arms. Um, so I picked it up. And of course, I had the feed issues. Well, I was ignorant. I went to High Point's forum. There's a High Point forum, and the guys all say, the reason you have feed issues with High Points are the magazine lips. Adjust the magazine lips out, right. comes up. and that allows you to use the High Point, no problem. Well, I was going to do what I was going to do, because you ain't the boss of me. <laughs> um, 500 annoying rounds later, working on how to clear a High Point, um, I finally decided to do what they say. I adjusted the feed lips, and I have not had a problem in the last. Yeah, didn't someone didn't someone rounds. challenge you on that? Was so was this before or after someone challenged you? Because I think I saw a video. This was this was after someone challenged me. Okay. I, I have the video on Simon Says Train on okay. YouTube. Um, that's that's uh, that's like, Simon's uh, that's uh, Tony's. Excuse me. It's you know it's Tony Simon. Yeah. So his what his uh, YouTube channel is Simon Says Train for folks out there. We'll put a link to it. Yeah, so he said, you can't shoot it. You can't shoot 50 rounds out of a high point without it damming up. So I loaded 50 rounds of 40 cal up, reloads even, just random reloads, steel case, anything, and I just blew through 50 rounds, no problem. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a video on that um, I shot the high point pistol multiple times off a bag, just across my range bag, 100 yards, 7-inch group, just a hand size group. Um, so, yeah, they're accurate. They're heavy. They're ugly. They make a Glock look streamlined. Yeah, they're super. Um, they're super ugly. Which Glock, I'm mm -hmm. sure, loves. It's like when you're, you know, not so. When you're like a six, when you're not like not super attractive oh, here goes, girl. Here goes, here goes. So you 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 develop a strategy in your life where all your girlfriends are like <laughs> negative sixes. Uh, <laughs> it makes you yeah. look really cute. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I wrote I wrote a review up. For it, it's on uh, Firearms Insider, mm -hmm. and it's one of the most highly viewed reviews out there. Uh, when people talk smack about the pistol, I'd usually post a link to my video, and that would just end all compliments. So when I went to the um, Great American Outdoor Show a couple of years ago, I ran into the High Point booth. So my boy Sean was with me then, and he was like, "Hey, why don't you tell him about the High Point pistol?" So I walked up and I spoke to the guy behind the counter, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, I got a High Point. I did a review on it." This is the good and the bad and the ugly. I was like, I don't care if it's heavy. I don't care if it's ugly, but you really need to do something about these magazines because that's the bane of his existence. That's why everybody poops on it. I'm like, if they took like 1911 mags, it'll be great because it's single stack. High Point's whole thing is to be 50 state legal. 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? So right. that's why it doesn't take a double it's stack. smart on their part. Oh, very smart. Because they came out with this around the Clinton assault weapons ban, and they yeah. made sure they stayed legal in almost every state. So I talked to the guy, and I was telling him about it, and I was telling him how great. It's a good product. It's not great at anything. It's just good enough. It's good enough, and it has a killer warranty. You know, if you own a high-point pistol, you get four free parts. If you call them and say you need a, a, um, a recoil spring, they'll just send it to you. I mean, they just send it to you. You get four free parts per owner, yeah. plus a lifetime warranty. So I talked to the guy, and I said, one of the cool things is getting high-point hate off of someone. I was like, I'm at the range, and I'm shooting better groups than the guys with more expensive pistols, and they just – they don't know what to do. Sometimes they just pack up and leave the range. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they're mad. <laughs> okay. So the guy goes, "Hey, why don't you really make them hate?" And he gave me these grips. If you can see them, oh, no. the money. <laughs> oh goodness. Yes, Hold sir. on a second. Let me let me, uh, let, me yeah. let me freeze this on your on your thing. So just I got run to it. Say Oh, them, yeah. some, them some gangster grips, I'm saying. Yeah. You know, I'm saying. That's money. The, the, that is some money grips right there. That's he said, money. you think they hate you now. I'll shoot them while it has $100 bill grips on it. <laughs> so um, that's what I did. I went ahead and put the $100 bill grips on it. And actually, the original high point um, grips are kind of slick if your hands get sweaty. These actually have some kind of a grip in them, which is pretty cool. And when I take a photo of this and post it online, People go bat crap crazy. They hate it. They they start saying some of the most racist stuff. Oh. And this is sometimes <laughs> it, it is just hilarious. And it's like, yes, I have CZ 75s, I have Rugers, I have Glocks. But somehow I'm tainted because I own a high point. And I'm like, I'm welcome everybody. Everybody Yeah, this is freedom, man. You're free, you're free to do what you want to do. I mean, you know, um, I see yeah. some comments there, people saying, hey, high point is better than no gun. People also mm -hmm. saying high points have been all over Instagram. I'm guessing you you've been kicking that off. Oh yeah, I have been. <laughs> <laughs> but um I, I guess I'm gonna have to do some high point stuff then. Well, check this one out. This is the high point nine millimeter carbine in their WC woodland camouflage, I think they called it. Um, they sent this to me, uh, to TNE. I told them about what the second is for everyone does and what we're trying to achieve and that I want to introduce people to new firearms. And I was like, this is New Jersey. It makes no difference how much a firearms cost. There's a lot of money here. Um, people have really good jobs because of these industries you and I talked about earlier. And sometimes their first gun will be a $150 high point pistol. It might be a $300 high point carbine, or it might be a Daniel defense rifle. You'll just never know introduce people to their guns and then they they took it and they get they gave this to us to use during the event i mean i still have to send it back if i don't purchase it myself but mm -hmm. it is what it is at least people got introduced most people don't know anything about high points so it's just another gun to them yeah also i mean a lot of people and, out there do have a budgetary limit here getting into yeah. guns and you know you can get in here and start to learn. I mean, there are people that have problems with high points. I was, I was, you know, um, our friend Steve from 904 Outdoors, I don't know if he's in the background in the chat or not. I was trying to get him to come on. He's done uh, quite a few videos on it. But look, you know, you can make them better. You can make them work properly. You can go through some things. Yeah, you shouldn't have to do that. But it's a good way to learn. And then if as you get deeper into this, you can elevate, kick it up. You know, and it doesn't mean you have to get rid of the high points. You know, if that's how you got into it, sometimes you hold on to it for nostalgia. There's kits and things like that you can do out there. Um, but don't let anything get in your way. I mean, you have this right to the Second Amendment. One of the ways that people can block you is through money and by, by trying to convince you that you have to get the most expensive things in the world. It doesn't mean you have to get high points. You can buy used guns. Right. I mean, you can get used guns at decent prices out there right now. But if a, if a high points, what you have to do, get in there and start. There are other guns besides high points that you can get into for yeah. around two hundred dollar price point, yeah. especially now with the sales going on. Hell, you can get a shield right now for two hundred dollars with the mail in rebate. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. Sky yeah. pistols are out there and they have a great warranty. Um, they got much yeah. triggers, too. And I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, Walter, do you have any recommendations just for people who are looking this, like, um, you know, oh. entry-level handguns? Kind of like what you said, and then there's some military surplus out there that's not too crazy priced. Um, mm. 
stars and talk robes and stuff like that. So, you know. Well, my thing with a military surplus, which I really like, um, but when it comes to someone that's going to use it for personal offense, firearm, yeah. tokarovs, and that stuff, it's not really set up to be easily done. I mean, once you get it done, there's a learning curve. There's all kinds of things. Who do you get to fix it? Um, yeah. that there's there's a guy. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah. But there's a guy in the comments. Will Killer says, start with FN57 or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's, well, that's that's my boy. That's my boy. <laughs> yeah, that's what, you know why I'm laughing because when I started, when I started, one of the first because FN57 is freaking cool, man. It's a bad. I don't. Experience. I don't yeah. have one. No, I, I had one. Yeah, I had one and I sold it, but I missed that thing so damn much. I gotta buy it. I gotta buy another one. So when I read his comment, I had to like stop oh, yeah. this for a second. Just to, like, I just can't. Props I just, to that I, dude. I just can't see. I can't pull, bring myself to spend twelve hundred dollars for a pistol like that. I just can't do it. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, I mean, we gotta well, got hit him. We gotta hit him up. Listen. Um, Will he'll, he'll, he wants me to buy one, I'm sure. So uh, yeah, Will Killer, hit us up, and we'll send you like we'll send you a 60 Harbor tactical gnome. Hey, um, <laughs> Hank, that's my son. Yeah. Oh, is that? That's my oh, son. Is, oh well, well, guess what, Will? You're not. That's your son. <laughs> that's my son. <laughs> oh, is that Will? I didn't know that was his. Oh, that was Will. Will. No tactical gnomes for you. <laughs> we'll we'll send those to Tony instead. Yeah, yeah we'll. Yeah, we'll we'll uh we'll we'll give you something. We'll we'll draw up something for you. Uh, I, thought, I thought you got my comment that he <laughs> wants me to buy one. That's what. Oh, he wants you to. Yes, I totally agree with him. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, no, I didn't realize that was Will. That's Will. And yeah, okay, that's this Will. is the first time I'm figuring out what Will's nom de plume is. Yeah. Nom de plume. Yeah, he's, he's his handle. Tall. That's his handle. Yeah, his handles. Will yeah. killer. Yeah. <laughs> so I would have never, I would have never ever put that nice. together. Totally got me. Yeah, on that he's one. out there lurking. That's what. Yeah, he's tr he's trolling us. <laughs> <laughs> Will is actually trolling us and trying to and make us. No get gnome for me. So yeah. No gnomes. <laughs> yeah, no, no gnome. gnome for you, Will. <laughs> Just for tricking, just for tricking Hank Strange, that's it for you. Back to your room. Now he's no known for you. <laughs> um, I'm reading some of the stuff in the chats, and the guys are talking about some of their first carry guns. Uh -huh. uh, one guy said he has a 229. I had a 1911. Th this is funny. I got out of the Marine Corps, and I was like, I need something because I'm moving to Jersey. So I need to have a personal firearm. And of course, this is 93. I didn't, I knew there were schools out there, but the only schools I know about were like um, Gunsight, you know what I mean? Or Thunder Ranch, and they were really expensive. I don't even That's know if Thunder end. Ranch was open. Yeah, and those were the only ones I actually knew about. And the sucky thing was, um, what's the name of that thing? Black, what was the name of it? Ran by uh, Black Seal Hall? Prince. I mean, uh, um, Blackwater. Blackwater. Blackwater yeah. yeah, Blackwater. Blackwater was like not far from me where I was stationed, but I didn't know anything about it. So I picked up a 1911 because that's what I was trained on when I was in the Corps. And, and then I was like, well, I, gotta, I have to have a holster. So what kind of holster do you get for 1911 and 93? So, you know, <clears throat> it's Same. either really expensive leather something. Right. That, that was the only thing. That yeah, was leather. That's really what hard. I was thinking. Yeah, you would get leather, right? Yeah, and, and leather, and I'm talking like um, Galco. Or DeSantis or something like that. Or... Uh, was DeSantis around? I knew Galco was around. And then there's like Wilt Sparks. And I'm like, well, my, my buddy Sam Andrews was around at the time, but you know, that's just chain this plug. Andrews well, custom my... leather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, my thing was, I have no idea what to get. I have no idea where you even buy these things at because they didn't have any in the gun shop I was in. So, you know, I went to Walmart and picked up me, me myself an Uncle Mike's. Oh, there you uh... go. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mike's inside inside the waistband sock, neoprene sock with a clip on it. And, for a 1911? Uh, for a 1911, baby. Nice. And I carried that around illegally, illegal as you want to be in New Jersey, because I was going to places like Newark, Camden, Irvington. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Irvington, that's where I was talking about earlier, Irvington. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. going to places. My, my, boy, my boys are in Irvington still. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to Irvington. places that have a crime rate that's ridiculous. Yeah. You're going to places where you you will die. <laughs> yeah. You will die. And yeah. as a locksmith, 
I got called yeah. when people oh, got yeah, off of yeah, work. Yeah. You you yeah. ever have you, know you ever heard of the Outsiders? The Outsiders? Yeah, yeah. it's a rap group from Irvington. Yeah. Those are my uh-huh. boys. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, I heard of them. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, but, those um, are my we, boys. We, believe yeah. it or not, <laughs> that's pretty cool, though, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Look at you. Yeah. <clears throat> I know about um, Jersey. I told you. I know something about <laughs> Jersey. I have friends that are Jersey. police officers in Jersey, man. I have a friend from Irvington who's now a police officer in New Jersey. And actually, he was the, uh, you know, he was my artist. He was a rapper. Okay. And he was part of the Outsiders. Yeah, we probably know some of the same people just because of the amount of time I spent here. I yeah. Mean, and, and, um, but the thing is, you don't know where you're going to end up. And as a locksmith, you do work sometimes when people get off work and they discover they lock themselves out of the house. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. they got off work at midnight. And you're, you're in danger. Gone. That's a dangerous job, locksmith, especially in the hood. Well, people don't understand what you go through. One, I have stuff in the car. I have, excuse me, in my van that could break into houses. I have right, tools, you got tools. That, are, yeah. that are easily turned into cash. I'm mm-hmm. not in my house. I mean, I'm not in my uh, vehicle because I'm at the house that had the problem. You know what I mean? So it's always something. And it's like, and the cops aren't around. Even when the cops were around, they leave. I mean, I've had to work on break-ins in the middle of the night in New Brunswick. I've, I've had dudes, I had a guy take an ax to a, a fire door and chop a hole in it. And they went in and stole copper out of this copper warehouse. Hmm. This was on 4th of July back in like 95, 96. Wow. And um, so I go there and it's a huge warehouse. And the back of it faces the hood. They, they have uh, some projects over there. Well, obviously, somebody came in. I have no idea if they came from the projects or not and chopped a hole in the door and stole some stuff. So I show up. It's me. It's the owner. And we go through the empty warehouse, like creepy empty, like horror oh, movie. Oh, dark and creepy. And, yeah. and, and it's all dark. Yeah. And it's all dark. And this is back in the day when, you know, I have a mag light flashlight and those things blow. I'm sorry. They suck. At least back then. <laughs> so... um. You had the mag light and you go through and boom, we're at the back door and there's a hole in the door big enough to stick your head in. Wow. And he was like, can you secure this until the morning? And I look at him like, there's an effing hole in the door, dude. What do you want me to do? So I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll take care of it. I'll secure the door with deadbolts. We pulled it on. I open the door and there's a cop, New Brunswick cop sitting in the back doing the paperwork on the break-in. So he looks at me and gives me a thumbs up. I give him the thumbs up. I bring my truck around. Hit it to high beams. I figured the cop's going to be there. And the warehouse is still dark because it has those bulbs that has to heat up. So the warehouse is dark. I'm high beamed by my own lights. The cop honks the horn, hits the lights, turns them off, and drives off and leaves me there. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you couldn't just pull the heck off and not let people know you left. You had to let people know, hey, the police officer is leaving now. <laughs> Now I'm highlighted. I can't see past my vehicle because I have my high beams shining on the door so I can work on it. The lights in the warehouse aren't on, so it's dark behind me. So I tripped over to my cu- my truck. I grabbed my 1911. I put it inside my toolbox, and I set the land speed record for installing two deadbolts on the door in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> and I got so, that. So as, as, a, as a locksmith, like, people don't you, understand. Did you ever try as a locksmith with all the things that you were doing to get any of these licenses? No, I didn't even attempt it because they don't care. They do no. not care what you do. Yeah. <clears throat> that's 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 just horrible, man. Uh, I mean, you know. Naked and afraid. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at that comments. was funny. Naked and afraid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Man>. Um, <laughs> you have to learn to watch your own back no matter where you are. And yes, you are on your own. But in some places, you're way on your own more than others. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let me see. We we covered High Point. I don't know if there's any other, you know, I'm sure there's people out there, that, you know, that are not done with the High Point conversation. <laughs> but uh, I, think we're pretty, um, I think we're pretty good on the High Point conversation. We're good right? on that. Yeah. We're good on that. Yeah. So I tell you one thing, though, what, what people don't know, and this is just one of those things I saw on NSS, NSSF's website. Mm-hmm. High Point is the seventh largest yeah. American firearms manufacturer. That's why I said before I wouldn't mind being them. <laughs> and High Point also, yeah. same comp- same mother company, uh, same large company, owns Inland Manufacturing. So Inland is under the High Point umbrella? 
Yep, Inland okay. and High Point are under the same umbrella. Okay. That and if you, you want to really see some really cool World War II era or even better stuff, go there and check out yeah. their well, look, stuff. People, here's what I think. I mean, and this is just one of my crazy, <laughs> you know, my, one of my crazy notions. You can laugh at High Point right now. They've been around for a long time. I'm sure they're making good money. Um, you know, it's a little bit like how uh, Hyundai <laughs> came along. And it was more, I remember when my dad bought a Hyundai back in 1986. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Hyundai Excel. <laughs> yeah. Hyundai Excel. That, yeah, that, that was like one. I think that was the first brand new car that my dad bought, at least in America. Um, uh-huh. Hyundai Excel. I mean, it was so horrible. But look at Hyundai's today. And, it, you know, the environment that we're going into here, man, with guns, don't be surprised at the end of, the, you know, next couple of years, High Point has bought up some intellectual property and some other companies, you know. Don't think they can. And upgrade a little bit, but, yeah, you know, we'll see. Here's, here's something that also ticks people off. The first American-made striker-fired pist- polymer pistol. Was it High was point. it a high point? Okay, there you go. And I know high point <laughs> high point for the carbines. We were talking about the carbines. I just want to mention. I know that there's some uh, bullpup kits out there that people keep asking me. My brother Anonymous Strange really wants me to cover the um, High Tower. That, That's the name of the company that does the bullpup kit. High Tower does the bullpup kit. It's not out yet. Oh, They're it's not. still working on it. Okay, affecting it. Yeah. So yeah. if somebody knows someone at at, at High Tower, you know what? So if you send us that kit, Walter and I will build that. Oh we'll yeah, do- we'll make it special. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll seriously. I'm not even kidding. Send us that kit, you know, and we'll do a video on it, and we'll get a, We'll get us a carbine. <laughs> Has anybody done mm-hmm. suppre- a suppressed high point? Mm. Is it the su- high point doesn't have a threaded barrel. They well, do that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, we can <laughs> thread it. We have the technology, but I mean, has anybody yeah, done like? Um, I don't know how easy that is. Yeah. Well, we'll, well, listen. I don't know if any. So probably someone's done it, knowing gun guys, but we could still do it. Okay, so here's a question that's a little bit off topic. We're gonna do some off topic stuff sure. right now. Um, I don't know who asked this question, but people want to know: Should medical marijuana card holders lose their gun rights? What do you guys think? Ooh, that's a good one. That's a, yeah. that's a that's a touchy situation, isn't it? Um, yeah. What do you think, Walter? Tell us. <laughs> well, once if they legalize it, uh, once again, it's state by state right now. So, yeah, I don't the, think. And the forty-four seventy-three is federal, so that would have to be changed, so, or well, people would just be lying on that. Well, <laughs> yeah. So I something's got to give. You know, yeah. I mean, um, I people are people are lying right now, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah, they're lying a little bit, you know, so <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. Yeah, I'm always, like, amazed. Like, I, I always find it funny when I watch people in the gun store that are just straight up <laughs> lying, and then they get turned out, and then they're just incredulous. Like, what? <laughs> how old are you? What's going what you on talking this? about? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, the truth of the matter is, is that we, you know, first of all, I don't think – um, we should just like the whole war on drugs is obviously no, been a lie. The, the whole marijuana, <laughs> the, the whole marijuana thing is pretty. I, I don't like the medical marijuana aspect of it because they're working toward the same thing anyway. So just do it. Yes. Yeah. Open it up. Let's stop playing games with all the medical marijuana garbage. Well, it's not we, garbage we, for some. It's not garbage for yeah. some people, but for yeah. most of them, when they're trying to take your um. So, um, so you're, you're, when you're filling out the petition and they're like, yo, dude, yeah. you want to you want to do the, You know, it's like, oh, come on, come yeah. on. Come on stop. Walter, <laughs> um, just out of curiosity here for like full disclosure, you know, I, I'm going to go down the line with everyone. I'm going to say that I I don't. But uh, do you do the ganja? Not, not now. No, I don't No, <laughs> I have enough. I have I'm enough. not going to tell anyone. If you I, tell me. Well, I just yeah. told the We're whole world. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> OK, so you did do the ganja in the past. I don't do it now. Does Will Killer know about this? <laughs> um, I'm not. They don't bring him into this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about you, Tony? What do you think about? It? I don't. I don't do drugs, but I'm. I'm. You know. I think we need I've, to stop making it illegal. I've. I've never done an illegal drug in my life. Um, but I, I really think we need to stop this lie. Um, it's huge business for a bunch of people, not just the cartels, but the government. Law enforcement. Uh, law enforcement. Yeah, law enforcement. we have so many millions of people locked up based on that, and we're destroying people's lives. Yeah. Now, here's the funny part. You can get as drunk as you want to be. 
<laughs> but God forbid you ever use any of the yeah. marijuana. And you can, you know, there's and, a lot of terrible things that you can smoke cigarettes, you can smoke cigars, mm -hmm. you can do all these things. I don't think that it's a terrible thing. Now, anything that you do that may affect your, your reaction, your ability to to react and, you know. Yeah, and yeah. to um, operate Make machinery, good calls. That's yeah, totally cars different. and all that. Don't do it. Don't take other people's yeah. life into your own hands because, you know, you're putting those people's lives at risk. Uh, at yeah. risk, but you know, if you're doing things within the safety of your own home or wherever else, as long as you're being safe about it and not endangering other people, why not? I, I don't think it's a big deal, and it should come off that stupid form, along with some other things. Like, why the hell do I have to say on that form twenty <laughs> times that I'm a black dude? <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, why? Well, sure they're, the, they're the only are ones that they can. Yeah, a I mean, ATF is the only people, if I'm not mistaken, that can ask that. Well, that's just where else? Where do I, you can't you can't you can't put that on a job application. Yeah. Uh, are you black? Are you yeah? Sure? Are you white? Are you green? You can't yeah, even. Are ask. you non-Hispanic, Latino? Yeah, Indian? yeah. And yeah. at the very end, yeah. the last one. Okay, here's a picture of a paper bag. Yeah. Here's a picture of a paper bag. Are you darker or lighter than this paper bag? It's so crazy. It's, <laughs> it's so crazy. It's yeah, and Lola used to ask me all the time. She's like, "Why are you just putting your black on there?" Because you know she knows obviously I'm I'm like mixed race or whatever. And I'm like, "This because this is too confusing." <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I didn't know there was going to be a test. <laughs> yeah, just let's just simplify <laughs> this. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I think yeah, if anyone wants to know, I think we're all in agreement here. Um, you know, I don't even know why. I, I think I agree with you, Walter. Like, why do we have this silly ruse of medical marijuana? I'm not saying it's not good for people. There are right. people out there that have ailments that it right, helps right. make them. But let's better. just get mm -hmm. let's, let's, it. The final the final thing is not that. The final thing is just de illegalizing it. Yeah, medical marijuana is like a gateway drug <laughs> to to just going recreational with right. it, right? And, and I think it's a racket for the doctors too. I feel it'll turn into that. You go to the doctor, hey doc, man, I'm just like, oh, I need something. A hundred dollars later, uh -huh. you get your you get your prescription. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And I mean, you know what's funny? I saw in the news. I don't have it pulled up right now, but I I can tell you, I saw somewhere in the news that Nevada actually ran out of weed. Anyone who doesn't believe me, <laughs> go look that up. It's crazy. I saw that in the news somewhere. Here, let me see. I'm gonna go look for it right now because I, I, a lot of people with glaucoma. Yeah, I mean. Gla Glaucoma. That's a. I'm. I got a glaucoma. That's Nevada. I mean. <laughs> if Nevada ran, ran, runs out of weed, that's crazy. Well, oh, I. I think I. I saw that somewhere. Yes, Nevada's legal weed dispensaries are running low. From RollingStone.com, four hours ago. <laughs> so are the price are the prices going up? <laughs> I don't know, but there's like. Uh, you know, there's a state of emergency <laughs> over this. You know, Dude. yeah. So check that out. That's funny. Also, like, what the hell is what's what the hell is going on with Shia LaBeouf? I mean, uh, oh, guy. he's he's a, he's a. I, and I don't know for sure, but you know, the dude is in a cycle. Every once in a while, he just he just freaks out. He must have mental issues. Yeah, he must Shia, not have been on. You know, a lot of people don't they don't take their medicine and they go woohoo. <laughs> I yeah. think he's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys don't know, yeah. there's like, um, I don't know if you guys know about this, but there's this video out there with Shia LaBeouf. He got, he got arrested in, I guess he's working on a movie. I think he's doing the McEnroe film or something. <laughs> Wait, is it John McEnroe? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's doing some kind of film. Let me see. Um, he's working on some kind of film, but he got arrested. I think he's playing McEnroe in some role. Uh, yeah, LeBeau is currently in Savannah, so this is in, he's in Savannah. So I got that shit in his system, the 308. Yeah. Okay, he's film, yeah, he's filming a movie <laughs> called The Peanut Butter Falcon. Don't know what the hell that means. Okay, and that. it's starring in the upcoming Borg versus uh, McEnroe as John McEnroe. Well, he fit so, the... He, He's yeah. macking out, I guess. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe he was in character. Maybe he was in character. Did you yeah, guys see this stuff that happened? Like, do you guys know what went down there? It's I heard he was threatening to kill the cops. That's not a good thing. Well, I think he asked someone for a cigarette somehow. Someone re realized that he was publicly drunk, and then he got arrested. But he was arrested by a black cop, so he goes off on the cop saying, like, why do you want to arrest one of the white guys who cares about you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we didn't know. Oh, well, I'm sure the cop uncuffed him and let him go then. 
So he was like, you know, you're living in America and the president doesn't care about you. <laughs> and all the cops don't care about you. And here I am, this awesome white dude who's taking care of you. And you want to arrest me, man. <laughs> so I watched that. It's so funny. And then he's telling, oh, I gotta watch cop, I he's telling some other cop, if I have my gun, <laughs> I'd kill you. on right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's not, that's not good. You know. Yeah, poor Shia LeBeau. <gasps> oh, poor Shia. Oh, <laughs> everybody at the same time. Oh, he was, uh, good. He was good in the Transformers movie. <laughs> so, oh, whatever. that's so funny. He must he's been gone, on his medication. <laughs> he's gone batshit. Here's another news thing. Before, like, I'm I'm gonna come back to some seriousness, but let's do. Here's another news thing. Did you guys see this? Um, there's a guy in the NFL. I don't know who watches <laughs> football here. Any of you guys? I'm not a athlete, athletic kind of dude. I'm not into sports. <laughs> Anyone watch the NFL? Football, um, watch. When I'm at Hooters and it's on. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that's enough, Walter. That's all we need. If you're in Hooters watching the football game when it's on, that's I'm not at, what I'm I would be my, doing in Hooters. I'm at Hooters with my wife. Come on. Oh, okay. Oh, I, oh. I would let her get distracted with the football game. I'm pretty sure that's They have the TV? They yeah. have TVs and Hooters. Oh, they got TV and Hooters. What, yeah, they got I mean, TV what are you talking Hooters? about? I didn't know. Only the boob tube. Only the boob tube. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, I'm there for the wings, man. I'm so, there for the wings. Sorry. Only the wings. I know that was that was pretty that was pretty low, but this this really this, a boob tube. This is actually a good video that um, if for anyone who want to watch it, it's um it's uh it's from TMZ and it's called Crazy Gun Arrest Video. It's about Adolphus Washington. Um, he's a Buffalo Bills lineman, and he was confronted by police. He was in a slingshot. Do you guys know what the slingshot yeah, looks like? Yeah, trike. So, trike. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, it's a reverse okay. trike. So that's two wheels up front and one in the back, and it's an open top thing. It has a steering wheel. Pretty cool. So what did he do? So he was in there. At, well, he was in this water park, and he left the water park, and he's getting into that thing. And um, and he he has a gun like a Glock 19 or something, and it's on the floor of the slingshot, which doesn't make any sense. So he goes to pick it up, and these cops see him, and then they bum rush him, you know. And he's really he's really lucky. You got to look at this video because they're telling him like you are really really lucky. But they didn't they didn't shoot him or anything like that. They arrested him. They put him in the in the car. He says he has a permit for it, but they were like, well, why were you reaching for it? And he just said that it was on the floor, and he had it on the floor of the slingshot when he went into the water park. And they're chastising him for that because why the hell would you have this gun in your slingshot, like on unsecured? Floor. Yeah, on the floor. So I think he's, you know, he's gonna they're, they're gonna probably press some charges against him. I'm sure he'll get off of it because he apparently did have a license and everything. But um, he's, you know, it just goes to show that you don't get killed every day. Well, uh, yeah. you know, these guys have yeah. some restraint. They had some restraint and all that kind of stuff, and and things went well. And it was a good, even from him. Like th I'm, I'm serious that I think it was a good video because when they had him in the car, they were talking to him. He was talking to them, and from what I see, he was like very respectful. I think he realized he did something wrong. It's really like I hate to say it, but it's one to grow on. You know, it's one of those things. It's one of those things that you probably have to learn the hard way. You know, secure your guns and definitely don't have a gun in the open like that. You know, because you don't want to be that NFL player that someone steals the, a gun out of your mm -hmm. out of your vehicle and then does something horrible with it. So, yeah. that's well, a slingshot's open. So, what do you do? Is there a lockbox on that thing somewhere, like a glove box or a storage um, yeah. compartment? There's a there's a few from what I know. I don't own one, but I have tried several times to convince Lola. <laughs> That I should own one. Kind of tough. For, kind of tough in a thunderstorm down here, but um, yeah, just you know, just for like review purposes. Uh, I, I think I think um, Safety Harbor needs a official vehicle slingshot. What do you okay. Think? No, nope. no. Okay, I'm trying, but you know, yeah, there are things you can lock on there, but also there's there's little there's little thin cases that you can get that you can um, you know it's. It's got the secure cords and all that kind of stuff that you could slide things under the seat and lock it. Like, try to do something. Don't make it easy for people to come and get their hands on these things. Yeah. Well, that's also another annoying part about having these gun-free zones. If you carry a uh -huh. gun with you all the time, now all of a sudden you have to find something to do with your gun. What if you happen you know to be I mean? next to the elementary school? 
Yeah, it's yeah. just ridiculousness. Well, I mean, I guess he was at the water park. It looked like he had on like a white tee. You know, you got to show your your awesome muscles off and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And I get all of that. <laughs> I get all of it. You know, but really, like, tr- I think you know, as long as it didn't turn out bad. Yeah, it didn't turn out bad. It's a good learning thing. We should all learn something from it. But then I think also that there's instead of, you know, just beating up on people in situations like this, it's what we were talking about earlier that we should try to kind of embrace them. I mean, obviously, he was doing everything the right way, but he's just not fully educated. So it's an opportunity to, you know, I don't I don't think he's going to accept if we reach out to him. (laughs) But he never does know. have the right. You know, he's an American. He has the right know. to the Second Amendment. Yeah, maybe right, maybe right, he right, would. Right, right, right. And and we'd be happy to, you know, talk to you about these things, give you advice, help you out on what to do here and how to... Drive your slingshot. Yeah, how to properly secure... Yeah, I would definitely be down to drive that thing. <laughs> so... Let's what see else? what else. What are the kind of what are the kind of gossip we got going on? Yeah. What 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 have you seen, Walter? What what interests you? Uh, you know, I haven't I haven't looked too much at the at the trash stuff on Fox today. So yeah. What um, do you think about this whole Donald Trump Jr. thing? Uh, it's more crap. It's more it's it's more diversion. There's nothing yeah. to it. There's nothing that's serious about it. You know, it's yeah. just more of the same stuff. In the meantime, nothing's going on in Washington. Not at all. No gun no, stuff, no health care, no, no parties, no nothing. So, well, I don't know about the parties, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I don't know what's going to happen here. I don't know how much fatigue people are going to get with this whole thing. Like, well, I mean. The, the people that support Trump know it's a bunch of crap anyway, so they're already over it. But it's there's this side that listens to all this stuff and goes, yeah, let's get him. Let's get him. You know, and yeah. it's like, there's nothing to get. You know, I mean. Well, I mean, I definitely. One, one thing, it, one thing it is doing is digging up a lot of crap about the Democrats. Yeah, that. But I mean, you know, and and also we see. I don't know if you've seen this in the news, but there's, um, you know, oh, yeah, there's just, there's some Democrats that have written up articles of impeachment and all kinds of crazy oh, things yeah. out there. But I wonder if they realize that if you get rid of Trump, <laughs> you know, you're getting pets out of this. Uh-huh. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, but they got, it, 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 it's not going to get any traction. It's just it's just getting their name out in front of everybody. That's all they're doing, you know. Right. I, but I'm looking at Fox here. It says Kid Rock is running for uh, Michigan Senate seat. Yeah, go I think. Go, yeah, Kid I think Rock. that. Go, go, yeah, go. I think there was something that uh, was posted on his social media, and people said that it's probably a joke. But Kid Rock came out and said it's not a joke. He's, and uh, you know that might be a good thing. And he don't need nobody else's money because Kid Rock is rolling in it. Oh, I don't even think he needs money. He's freaking Kid Rock, man. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You, you, know, you make one Rock. commercial or you well, show up on one. <laughs> then I want Ted Nugent, man. Where's Ted? Where's Teddy? Come on. Um, yeah, I, you know. Um, he's just got, too much for most people. That's a problem. I don't have any problem with Ted Nugent running for office. I don't know if he's if he's really into it or whatever. No, it's, it's no fun running But listen, for everyone office. can't say, here's the thing. Like, everyone wants to talk stuff about this, and no one wants to run. You know, it's like, I hate to go back yeah. to the Jamaican the Jamaican thing here, but I, I got yeah. this from a movie. <laughs> Everybody oh, want to go heaven, but nobody want dead. <laughs> well... Think about you know, being, that's the problem. That's the problem here. Everyone wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. No one wants to run for political office. I'm sorry. We're going to have to do that in order to have this revolution, people. I, no? You don't agree? No, with well, I mean, yeah, I, I, I just wouldn't last a week there. You know, after I open my <clears> mouth. <throat> Yeah, but look, you know, I mean, we I think a lot of people understand that Trump is not like a, a um, you know, a polished politician and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and he's getting a lot of leeway. I think that's what people want. People want someone who's not a politician, who doesn't get along well, with, the, with the other politicians, who doesn't give a crap about them, who feels like icky being around their asses. <laughs> that's 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 Trump. Yeah, oh, and, but it takes, it's going to take more than Trump. It's going to take. No, we, I know Trump I know, is I know. not solving all our problems. No, I, I know, but I mean, but you got to remember something. If you decide to run and be a Republican or whatever you are, you're going to need money, and you're going to have to go pay homage to the old guys to try to get some money, unless you're like you know hooked up yeah. with the leftists. The, um, I mean, that's true, but I think we can change that. I think there's ways to change that, and I think well, that you know, there's we we can we can find different sources of money because yes, if you do that, then you're going to get corrupted by that. Well, you're you're beholden to them then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You have to be. 
to. I mean, to even make- even Obama. Obama didn't have a pot to pee in, but he, but he, but a lot of uh, leftists backed him with their money and all that, and he was beholden to them. He had to do things, you know. Um, but he's that way, anyways. But I mean, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm sorry, but there are enough there are enough people who are libertarian and conservative or whatever that have money, but they won't run. They can do it on their own, oh. especially on a local level. Local level is where the real, real change is made. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This, this affects your towns. This affects your state. Right, this right. is where the swing can actually happen. Um, again, yeah. just taking into account the fact that I worked the election in a district with over 565 people in a primary, 25 people came out and voted. Mm-hmm. You don't need money for that. You need people to get off of their butts. It doesn't yeah. cost money to get people off there. Let me explain something. You could have had a clean sweep just by having 16 people come in and vote for you in that primary. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> true. So, yeah, you don't need money. You need to actually get someone, a cult of personality, get people motivated, right. get off their butts yeah. in a primary. Yeah. And take and uh, take over stuff, election. people. I mean, I think it could be done. I think we could take over stuff. I think that we're getting to a point where we can move past the parties and stuff like that. So you can take over the Republican Party. You can, for that matter, take over the Democratic Party if you really want to. Yep. You know, we can yeah. we can take over these things and change them. I know it's not easy. I know that, that there's a lot of temptation. A lot of people say that they're going to do that. And then when they get in there, they change. But I know that it's possible. It's possible to do it. I hope I'm showing people that it's possible to do it because you can't imagine every day there's someone who tries to tell me to change. Cut the mohawk off. <laughs> Stop Why? putting stuff in your head. It happens. They, you know, they tell me to. What's with the mohawk? You know what I mean? I, I don't know, man. I mean, that's why you and I are friends because it doesn't bother you and you're able to support it. it Yeah. But, you know, but that's that's what I'm saying. You know, I think that if you stick to who you are, that there's people out there who are going to appreciate that. It's definitely more difficult. But I think if you do it, there's a way to pull through and we can really change this without getting corrupt. We don't have to change who we are in order to start changing the system. And, And again, don't go on a large scale, go on a small scale. Take right, over yeah. your town, take over your county. I mean, that's that's the way you do it. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. To so, start. To yeah. Start. To start. Yeah. Yeah. To absolutely. Start. So let I me see. In... You know. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was no, going to say we should. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Not, you go. You go. I'm not going to say anything. Okay. I was living in Trenton for a while. I, I worked the election boards there, and they have you go to their city hall, city council. I'm in the city council room. And again, Trenton has 250,000 residents. Their city council room for when they have city council meetings has 50 seats in it for, for, <laughs> for citizens. That's how little people participate. How many, how many of those seats process. get filled? How many of those seats oh, get you know, filled? Oh, you know it's not a full room. Because yeah. I was sitting in the back and the seats look brand new. I'm just saying. Wow. People don't come in and take part of the political process. You show up with 25 people from your block, you'll scare the crap out of your city hall. Yeah. Don't get complacent, people. This is something I'm really worried about because of uh, because of what Trump. happened with the elections. Yeah, I'm, wor- I'm worried that people are getting complacent and they think like, OK, we got Trump, so everything's going to get. So- no, man, that's crazy. Don't depend on any. You cannot depend on anyone. I don't depend on Trump or anyone, anyone out there, you know. Keep fighting. That's how you stay alive. That's how we, we stay in the game. That's how we reverse some of these horrible laws. That's how we actually win our country back, make America great again by kicking ass always. Yeah. <laughs> so I, um, I want, you know, Lola's given me the sign. We've been doing this for like two hours. So I want to wrap oh, wow. it up. Wow. Tony, let me give you a chance. I know the T-shirt that you're wearing is a T-shirt you were talking about, right? So, yes, it is. Second yeah. is for everyone. T-shirts, they're on sale right now and only for a limited time, limited edition until August 30th at uh, diversityshoot.com. Go on diversityshoot.com. If you don't want to buy a T-shirt, help me out with a donation because I really need it. August 3rd, we have an event coming up and I need to actually purchase some swag and some ammo for it. So if you can help me out, I really appreciate it. Again, diversityshoot.com for the T-shirts and donations. All right. Awesome. Cool. And we'll try to get together and see what we can do. Put some stuff together for you. Send some stuff out there to help out. <laughs> Are empty 50 caliber cases illegal in New Jersey? Oh, boy. Probably. No. Oh. <laughs> no, they're fine. Oh, we have some, bo- some bottle openers. Bottle yeah. Openers. 
yeah, yeah those, those are great. Yeah, he's got some cool bottle openers that are they're 50, <laughs> 50 cal um, cases. So that will be awesome. All right, Walter, did you have anything that you wanted to uh, tell us about what you guys are working on? Uh, the same old stuff, you know, just yeah. trying to get, get things, get ahead a little bit in the shop. Um, okay. is, Will, is Will Killer doing his job? Lola's telling me that it's not Will Killer, it's Will Keller, but there's no E in there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, he, well, I'm, well, Will, tell everybody how you're doing. Post it up there. Come on. Yeah. Um, no, he he's doing fine. He's doing fine. Yeah. We're working on some, uh, actually, we're working on changing our website and, 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 and stem parts and safety over firearms and getting that all worked out because we've had yeah. two different providers and it's a cluster, you know what? So, yeah, um, I think some people said they were having some problems when we put yeah. up the video with the website. Is that yeah. all getting cleared um, up? Well, you, last time, well, yeah, yeah, we're yeah, SSL certificates and all that stuff that makes people scared to use your website. So, right, we're working yeah. on that. And, um, what else am I doing here? Um, just the typical stuff. I mean, shop stuff, you know. Okay, so, cool. We'll get together and make some more stuff, make some more mayhem. Yeah, absolutely. We've got more videos <laughs> coming up. Be sure if, you guys should be sure to check out. We have. Uh, a detailed video on Sten Guns. It's called Everything You Need to Know About Sten Guns. That's on YouTube right now. So definitely go out there and check that out. Uh, of course, we're doing you know this this podcast, and it's on iTunes. So we, we got approved for iTunes, so we need you guys to go there, leave positive reviews for us. We're on iTunes. You could go download us, and we're trying to you know get on to other places for people that want to know about that. Um, of course, I want to thank everyone that sponsors the channel, including... My friend Walter here and Will Killer from Safety Harbor Firearms, <laughs> <laughs> you know, ran CLP and Andrew's Custom Leather. And big shout out to Big Daddy Guns that provides the studio. And of course, like the biggest supporters of our channel are the, the dudes and dudettes who support us on Patreon, which, you know, we're like Patreon slash Hank Strange. I want to encourage everyone to go on there and support us. And if you are doing that, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I want to thank all the folks behind the scenes. Like the people behind the scenes on these videos, they are partying down, man. They're having a lot of fun. Like if you're not, like anyone who's watching this after, you should try to join these things sometimes because these guys are off the chain. They're wild. All right, so that's it. We're going to drop out right now. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Peace.